Infection prevention and control is critical to prevent or stop infections in healthcare settings. During the COVID-19 outbreak, IPC is especially important in all healthcare settings, including those providing immunization services. What is infection prevention and control? Infection prevention and control, or IPC, is a scientific approach and a set of practical solutions designed to prevent harm caused by infection to patients and health workers. Proper adherence to standard IPC practices can help protect you as a healthcare worker, your patients, your family, and ultimately the community. In this video, you will learn about the standard IPC precautions that should be in place during routine services and during outbreaks. WHO recommends using these standard precautions as an ongoing activity in all healthcare settings, irrespective of COVID-19, for the care of all patients, regardless of their suspected or confirmed diagnosis. The best way to prevent the spread of germs is through good hand hygiene practices. If your hands are not visibly soiled, you can use alcohol-based hand rub, which is preferable in a health setting. When your hands are visibly soiled, or if alcohol rub is not available, you can use running water and soap. When using alcohol-based hand rub product, rub your hands 20 to 30 seconds to ensure all the areas of the hands are covered. Using soap and water requires you to rub your hands a bit longer, 40 to 60 seconds. Rubbing hands should include in between fingers, thumbs and back of hands. Respiratory hygiene helps to reduce the spread of microorganisms that can cause respiratory infections. When you cough or sneeze, cover your nose and mouth either with a tissue or with the inside of your elbow. Right after you cough or sneeze, throw away any tissue you used into a closed bin and always perform hand hygiene. Respiratory hygiene also includes staying away from others as much as possible whenever you or they are ill. Avoid introductory kissing or shaking hands. If you are ill or experiencing any sort of symptoms, especially during a respiratory outbreak like COVID-19, you should avoid coming to work. Avoid close contact with people who exhibit symptoms. Anyone who is having respiratory symptoms should wear a medical mask. If people in the community do not have access to medical masks, they may also wear non-medical masks also called cloth masks. Cloth masks typically do not provide the same level of protection as medical masks, but they do provide some level of barrier and can prevent an ill person from infecting somebody else. Determine which type of personal protective equipment or PPE to wear for each interaction with a patient. What items to wear will depend on the risk of exposure to and contact with any bodily fluids such as blood or respiratory droplets and or open skin. You can find more about this step in a separate video on risk assessment. There are six types of PPE that are relevant in a healthcare setting. The gown, which is a long-sleeved impermeable gown that covers the body and the arms down to the wrist. Gloves. If worn with a gown, gloves should go over the cuff of the gown. The face mask, which covers the nose and mouth. The respirator, which is often referred to as an N95, FFP2 or FFP3. A respirator covers the nose and the mouth and it is indicated during aerosol generating procedures. The face shield, 
which is a form of eye protection covering the eyes, nose and mouth and is often used in combination with a mask. Goggles, in combination with a mask, are recommended when a face shield is not available. Ensure safe injection practices so that injection does not harm the recipient, does not expose the provider to any avoidable risks, and does not result in waste dangerous for the community. Follow the national guidance for safe handling and cleaning of patient care equipment specific for your facility. Maintain clean and disinfected environmental surfaces, especially high-touch surfaces that provide greater risk of infection transmission. These include chairs and tables, door handles, light switches, etc. Remember to perform hand hygiene after each cleaning or patient interaction. Laboratory studies have shown that virus causing COVID-19 can stay on surfaces from a few hours to up to 72 hours, depending on the material. The good news is that this is a fragile virus and it can easily be eliminated by cleaning with soap and water, followed by 0.1% chlorine. So, it is important to clean surfaces to prevent infection. Put soiled linen in a designated container or area to be laundered, according to specific guidance. Remember to perform hand hygiene after you dispose of soiled linens. And always dispose of waste properly. Hazardous waste can harm people and the environment. So make sure you know which method your facility uses to dispose of it. You should now know the standard IPC precautions for all healthcare settings, which you should have in place during routine services and during outbreaks.